Now we're going to dive into the world of chemical equilibrium. Now, um, up until this point, we have always assumed that reactions go from left to right, meaning from reactants to products. But what we're going to start to discover is sometimes those products turn back into reactants, which means that not every one of our reactions will go 100% into products. So at some point in the reaction, we will hit a spot where we are neither um, we're not finished and we haven't begun. We are both, okay? And I'm not just talking about the middle. I'm talking about a point where everything is going in a loop, where reactants are turning into products and products are turning into reactants. And that is called equilibrium. Equilibrium is when the forward and the reverse reactions proceed at the same rate, okay? So again, yes, you can have reverse reactions. You'll notice this double arrow, and I'll talk about this again in a second. Okay, that double arrow is going to indicate to you that there is equilibrium present. So N2 and H2 are combined to form NH3, and some of those NH3s, when they bump into each other, they will break down and form N2 and H2 as well. Now another term that's thrown around when we're talking about equilibrium is reversible. And the term reversible just means that you can turn the reaction around and turn the products back into reactants, okay? And it does it automatically. Uh, reversible reaction, I'm sorry, equilibrium reactions are reversible, but not all reversible reactions are equilibrium because <clears throat> sometimes they can't establish an equilibrium for themselves. They just can't find that middle ground. Yes, some of the products turn back into reactants, but it may not be to a point where it, both the forward and reverse reactions are proceeding at the same rate. And that's the key, um, the same rate, meaning if I'm turning three, uh, four moles into two moles in this direction while I'm turning two into four. They, they're happening at the same pace, okay? Now at equilibrium, you do not have the same amount on both sides. Okay, it's not like a scale where I've got a five grams on the left and five grams on the right, okay? It doesn't work like that. Um, it's a mole movement. So if I move one mole from the left to the right, then I am moving one mole from the right to the left at the exact same moment at the exact same speed, okay? But I don't have to have the same amount on both sides. I can have differing amounts of products than I do reactants. I could have more reactants than at equilibrium, or I could have more products at equilibrium. It doesn't matter. Okay. Here's a great example of a reversible, a reversible reaction. H2O liquid uh, turns into H2O gas. That's perfect. Okay. Now, that will be, uh, this double arrow shows you that the reaction is going in both directions at the same time. So that's what's going to be the tip, uh, tip off that you're dealing with equilibrium. Now, that, this process is, rever uh, is at equilibrium when it's at three, um, 100 degrees Celsius. At the boiling point of water, this process is going both directions. But I don't have to be at the boiling point of water to have that process happening. Okay, but at 100 degrees Celsius, it's also at equilibrium. So now, how do I express equilibrium? Well, besides just writing reaction, there's actually a specific ratio that we can lay out for that particular reaction, and that is termed the equilibrium constant K. Okay, K for a chemical reaction does not change. It's always the same. Okay, it doesn't matter how much reactant you have, how much product you have, K will always come out to be the same number. The way you find K is you take the concentration of the products raised to their coefficients, you know, the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation, divided by the concentration of the reactants raised to their coefficients. Okay? And if you have multiple reactants or multiple products, you would just multiply them all together. And I'm going to show you how to lay out the K constant in a second. Some things you need to know about K. One, it has no units. Yay, no units. Okay, uh, because if you think about it, it's mole, it's molarity divided by molarity, and molarity divided by molarity is nothing, so it all goes away. Two, it's based on the coefficients in the balanced chemical reaction, okay? Key because... <clears throat> Every once in a while, they will give you an unbalanced reaction. So just make sure that the reaction is balanced before you start. Number three, solids and liquids are never used in K. And the reason for this is uh, the concentration of them never changes. Okay. If you think about a gas, 
gases take up this, the volume of their container. So if I go into a two liter container of a gas and remove um, you know, 0.1 moles and close the container back up, the remaining moles will still be two liters. They don't change, but the moles have di changed. So my moles over liters ratio has changed. So its concentration will change for gases. <coughs> but solids, like if I go into a solid and I take a piece of a solid, I take like I have a block of solid and I chop off half of it and remove it, well not only have I changed the moles present, but I've also changed the volume of that solid. So since I've changed both equally, the molarity will never change. And then finally, if you see the term Kc, that means you're dealing with things in molarities. And if you see the term Kp, you're dealing with atmospheres, okay? So because P for pressure, C for concentration, okay? So Kc would be used in a situation where you have aqueous solutions. Kp would be used in a situation where you have gaseous uh, substances, okay? So let's see how to lay out the equilibrium constant, and maybe that will make more sense to you. And then we'll do some calculations in the next podcast. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to write the K formula for the following reaction. So you're going to write the products over the reactants raised to their coefficients. Pause the video, do these five now, and then come back and see how I did them. Okay, so again, you always raise the products over the reactants. So I take the concentration of N2O times the concentration of NO2, both raised to the first power, divided by the concentration of NO cubed. Okay, because there's a 3 out in front of the NO. In my second reaction, I take the concentration of CS4 times the concentration of H2 to the fourth, because there are four of them, divided by the concentration of CH4 times the concentration of H2S squared. Okay? And if I had numbers, I would just plug them into my little brackety things. Okay, now. A little tricky one here for you. Uh, products of reactants. So the concentration of CO to the fourth divided by the concentration of NiCO to the fourth, I'm sorry, CO4 to the first. Notice I left out the nickel. Why? It's a solid. I don't need it in its equilibrium. Now, is it important for the reaction? Absolutely. I cannot remove it from the chemical reaction, but it has no part in the equilibrium. No matter whether it's there or not, the equilibrium will continue. Okay, now the next one. Products over reactants. H2O cubed divided by H2 cubed. Okay, Different substances, so I don't reduce down the cubes. I leave them there because they're going to represent different things. And then finally... NO2 to the fourth times O2 divided by N2O5 squared. And that's how to set up your K formulas. Uh, like I said, in the next podcast, we'll actually do calculations with them, and we'll get into some fancy schmancy stuff.